So three steps to design the IR filter as we discussed uh, earlier is we are going to transform the, the digital filter specifications into analog filter specifications first. Then we are going to create the analog filter um, for those specifications. And the last step is going to be to apply the bilinear transform to convert H of S, that is the analog filter transfer function, into H of Z, which is the digital filter uh, transfer function. So we're going to look at number two and number three first, and then we're going to uh, go back to number one. Uh, but when you are, of course, designing a filter, you will have to go uh, through each step in this sequence. But again, uh, let's just start with number, uh, number two first. That is, um, how we are going to uh, design the analog filter. So the design of the analog filter is going to be done using the low-pass standard model. So the standard model of the low-pass filter uh, is this. This low-pass filter has cutoff frequency 1 radian per second. So basically S is, remember, is what? Laplace transform, right? S is, in general, given by sigma plus j omega. Sigma is the transient response, and omega is your steady state sinusoidal response. <clears throat> so when we are discussing the filters, uh, we don't really uh, consider the uh, transient response. All we consider is the steady state sinusoidal response. Because remember, what is the purpose of uh, filters? If you're changing the frequency of your input, at some frequencies, you get the output. At other frequencies, you don't get the output. So basically, it's a uh, frequency, uh, the, the filter is basically um, a, a device, uh, a circuit that uh, removes certain frequencies and let other frequencies go through it. It's a frequency selective circuit. So basically we only consider J omega. So we're going to go ahead and replace S by J omega as I'm showing you over here. So the response of the filter in terms of J omega, and this is the low pass filter, is this, when we, when we change S to J omega. Now, this omega, of course, remember, omega is what? Angular frequency. And the unit of omega is radians per second. Now, this, is, this filter has the cutoff frequency of 1 radian per second. 1 radian per second. <clears throat> and the, and the, why I'm calling it 1 radian per second? Because you can write this down as 1 over 1 plus J omega over 1. So this is the cutoff frequency right here. And why I'm calling this cutoff frequency? Because remember, what is the significance of cutoff frequency? The cutoff frequency, especially for the analog filter, the cutoff frequency is the, fil is the frequency at which the response of the filter, the magnitude response of the filter, goes down to 70.7% .7 or 1 over a square root of 2 times the peak response. And the peak response of the filter occurs at DC. That is when omega is equal to 0. So when omega is equal to 0, so if I want to um, create a plot, and I show the magnitude response of the filter, H of j omega, and this is the magnitude, right? Now, how I'm going to calculate the magnitude of this? This is a complex number, remember? How do you calculate the magnitude of a complex number if it is given in the fractional form? the magnitude of the numerator divided by the magnitude of the denominator. So magnitude of the numerator is 1, because it is a real number. And the magnitude of the denominator will be, it's a complex number, so it is going to be a square root of real part square plus imaginary part square. So 1, which is the real part, plus imaginary part square, which is omega square. Of course, you don't use j, remember. So. When omega is equal to 1, what you're going to get? 1 over 1 square root of 1 plus 1, which is 1 over square root of 2. Now, when omega is 0, your response is 1, 1 over 1, right? That means at DC, the value is 1. And when omega is going to become 1, let's say x-axis is omega, radian per second, radian per second. When omega is going to become 1, then the response is going to drop down to 1 over square root of 2 at what frequency? Omega is equal to 1. 
and as you keep increasing omega, of course, denominator will keep on increasing, and the response of the filter, the magnitude response of the filter will keep on decreasing. So your low pass filter is standard response is generally this, as you know, like this, right? And this is your cutoff frequency, the cutoff frequency at which the magnitude of the uh, the magnitude response of the filter becomes 1 over square root of 2 of the peak value, and the peak value is 1 in this case, so 1 over square root of 2. Now, for the for the analog filter, which are the passive analog filter, that is, um, <clears throat> passive means that they're, uh, they don't provide any gain in the pass band. Uh, you, you have active flow pass, um, I mean active analog filters, and usually active analog filters uh, are created using uh, operational amplifiers, because operational amplifiers can provide gain using an external power source. Uh, but for the, uh, if you're just using, uh, you know, inductor, capacitor, resistor, as you as as we discussed in the uh, circuit analysis, and if you're creating filters, then those are passive uh, filters, and passive filters uh, basically they don't provide any gain in the pass band. So the peak value in this case is just going to be one, which represent that at DC the input will be equal to the output. Why? Because, remember, what is H, uh, P, J, omega? That's the output. If it is, let's say, the voltage, V out J omega over V in J omega, right? Output over input. So at DC, output is going to be equal to input, uh, uh, input value. And then as the frequency increases, then the output value is going to drop down uh, as compared to the input value. All right, in any case. So this is a low pass filter with the cutoff frequency of one. And this is our standard model. We, all of our filters will be based on this model. OK, so now, if you have a filter, a uh, low pass filter, that the cutoff frequency is not one. In this case, we are assuming that the cutoff frequency is omega c, right? omega c radian per second, let's say 500 radian per second or whatever. Then you're going to take the standard model, which is this, 1 over s plus 1, and you're going to go ahead and replace s by s over omega c, as simple as that, s over omega c. And when you replace s by j omega, then it's going to be h of j omega, 1 over j omega, over omega c plus 1. Now, observe in the denominator, right? Omega c is in the denominator over here. This is the cutoff frequency, because when omega is going to become omega c, this thing is going to become what? This fraction is going to become 1. That means this is going to become 1 over the square root of 1 plus 1. That is 1 over square root of 2. And the peak value is 1. So at omega equals omega c, the value of the magnitude response is going to become 1 over square root of 2. That is 1 over square root of 2 of the peak value, which is 1. Hence, omega c will be considered as the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter. So. That's how you're going to use the standard model of the low pass filter. And all you have to do is to substitute s by s over omega c if omega c is the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter that is required. And your new low pass filter is ready. And again, you can create the, um, you know, the low pass filter magnitude response as I discussed earlier. <clears throat> and similarly, you can create high pass filter, you can create band pass filter, band stop filter, every filter using the same prototype. Uh, when you have the high pass filter, again, you substitute basically s is equal to omega c over s. Instead of s over omega c, in the standard model of low pass filter, you substitute s is equal to omega c over s. Uh, for the band pass and band stop filter, we have two frequencies, the lower cutoff frequency and the upper cutoff frequency high frequency and low frequency. You have the resonant or the center frequency, omega naught, and you have this W is the bandwidth. It's usually given by BW or B. Uh, in your book, it is given as uppercase W, so we're just going to go with uppercase W, and that's the bandwidth of the filter. That is the, the, uh, the band of frequencies which is considered uh, to be the pass band of the filter. That is, all the frequencies should pass through uh, that length of the filter. If it is high pass, uh, if, sorry, if it is band pass or band stop, of course, it's going to be opposite. Band stop is going to be this. So basically, bandwidth is going to be 
the band of frequencies where the fre frequencies are going to be stopped by the filter. Uh, the center frequency, omega naught, is basically the frequency at which um, you will have the peak response of the filter. And center frequency is equals to the square root of omega 1 uh, times omega, omega low times omega high. And the bandwidth is the difference between omega h and omega 1, uh, omega l, sorry, not omega 1. Um, the high frequency, high cutoff frequency minus the low cutoff frequency. And this table from your book, it shows you that how you are going to use the low-pass low filter prototype to design uh, low-pass with a specific cutoff frequency, high-pass with a specific cutoff frequency, band-pass with a specific center frequency and bandwidth, and band-stop with a specific center frequency and bandwidth. So instead of, so remember your, your, your model, the standard model of low-pass filter is what? 1 over s plus 1. So if you want to create a band pass filter for this s, you're going to substitute s square plus omega naught square over s times uppercase w. And then you're going to simplify it, of course. You, you will, of course, those values will be given to you or you will calculate bandwidth if lower and upper cutoff frequencies are given to you. You're just going to subtract them to calculate bandwidth. And if only lower and upper frequencies are given to you, you can calculate, of course, both the center frequency and the bandwidth. If they are not given to you, then, of course, omega naught will be given to you and bandwidth will be given to you. So, you know, whichever way. All right, let's look at example 8.1. And in this example, we are creating a, a low-pass filter with a specific cutoff frequency using the standard model. And the cutoff frequency in this case is 10 kilohertz. Right, so first thing we're going to do is, this is f of c, right, in hertz. So this is the cyclic frequency, cyclic cutoff frequency. First, we are going to calculate the angular cutoff frequency in radian per second. This is in hertz, we're going to calculate in radian per second. And again, you guys know that uh, to convert um, hertz into radian per second, all you have to do is to multiply the um, cyclic frequency by 2 pi. So we calculate 2 pi f of c. And this will be our cutoff frequency in radian per second, 62.831 kilo radian per second. And that's what we're going to go ahead and plug this in here. We'll simplify this, and this will be our H of S. That is the analog filter uh, response. And then we're going to go ahead, and we are going to substitute S equals, um, S equals J omega. So that's what we, we did, j omega. And you know we wrote down the equation in terms of j omega. Then we calculate the magnitude response. In your book, the magnitude response is given by m of w, which is the magnitude of h of j omega. We calculated the magnitude response. We calculated the phase response. And then we can go ahead and plot it using MATLAB. Now, when you're, when you're plotting the analog filter response, um, reuse semi-log x function instead of plot function. Why semi-log x function? Because semi-log x, basically, or semi-log x, whatever you want to call it, it basically divide the x-axis uh, or represent the x-axis into logarithmic scale. That is, each of the tenfold of frequency will have the same distance from each other or length from each other, as you can see. So this is 10 to the power 0, 1. This is 10. This is 100. This is 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, and 1 million. The length between each tenfold frequency, if you're using the semi log scale, is the same, and it comes very handy when you are um, when you are plotting the frequency response uh, of any system. Uh, and the reason uh, why, because uh, let's say you don't use semi log x, you use plot, and, and try both actually. Try both and see how it's going to look like. What's going to happen if you do plot? Is when you go to the upper frequencies, of course, they are much larger than the lower frequencies. So all these lower values are just going to be squeezed in one corner. So basically, your filter response is just going to look like, because most of the low-pass frequencies are at lower frequencies as compared to higher frequencies. Uh, if you don't use semi-log x, basically, what you're going to see is something like this. It's just going to drop real quick. Because again, all the small frequencies are just going to be squeezed on the left-hand side. Um, and, and then you will have the large frequencies um, because, again, those, those are large numbers. 
So the small numbers becomes quite small with respect to those large numbers. Uh, that's why it's always wise to use semi-log x instead of plot. The way you use it is the same as you use plot. So, you know, semi-log x or semi-log x, whatever you want to call it. Um, x, values of x, which is f or omega, whatever you're using, and uh, h of j omega, right? This is how you use it. <coughs> so, make sure you use semi-log x to plot the frequency response of the analog filter only. Remember, analog filter. Look at example 8.2. Uh, in this one, we are plotting uh, a band pass filter, as you can see over here, right? From the standard low pass prototype model. So, for the band pass uh, filter, uh, we take, uh, we replace S by S square plus omega naught square center frequency square over SW, the bandwidth. And now, what is given to us? Center frequency is given to us, and the bandwidth is given to us. Both are both values are given to us in radian per second, so in, it's not they're not given in, in hertz, so you don't have to convert them. They're already given in radian per second, so you're gonna go ahead and plug those values in, uh, you know, simplify them, and then we're gonna plug s is equal to j omega, and then we're gonna go ahead and calculate the magnitude response, which will be like this. And I'm not showing you those equations, so make sure you do them. Um, you convert, you substitute S is equal to J omega, write down the expression for the magnitude response, and then go ahead and plot the magnitude response as we plotted earlier. So this is the second step. We uh, Remember, we still have to do the first step. That is how to convert the specification of a digital filter into uh, the analog filter specifications. But once you have those specifications, that is, in this case, let's say, once you have, once you know the uh, the uh, center frequency and the bandwidth of a band pass um, filter, uh, analog filter, then this is the second step as how to use the standard prototype low pass filter to design whichever filter, analog filter you're looking for. So in the next video, we're gonna look at the step number three, that is how to go from H of S into H of C. And then we're gonna go back to the first um, uh, first step, that is how to convert first the specifications of the digital filter into analog filter. Okay, so we'll see, I'll see you in the next video.